there's a dark moon coming up at the end of this week. And so I wanted to share my recipe for making witch's black salt. It's great for warding, defense, setting boundaries, and you can use it as a magical filter to keep only the things coming in that you want in your life. You may have seen other recipes for witch's black salt online, but I don't think you've seen one like this. Coming up next. Hi guys, welcome back to The Witch's Studio. This is where I do my writing, where I do my illustration, my magical artwork. And yes, this is where the magic happens. I welcome you guys here in my studio about once a week. I love showing you guys some interesting ways to make spell elements like this Witch's Black Salt, which is the blackest black salt. I love teaching you guys spells, sharing witchy tips. That's the kind of thing that you're interested in and you want more of the kind of content that I'm gonna bring you today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss anything. So, Witch's Black Salt. You've probably seen this around. I've been making it for ages. I got some from my sister years ago that was actually from Hawaii. It was the culinary black salt, which you can use as a, a condiment on food, but I used it for my witchcraft. Well, when I ran out, I wanted more. And I tried some of the recipes online that talked about you using ash for to make your black salt but it never turned out as beautiful and dark black as the witch's salt that my sister gave me that came from Hawaii. I wanted to come up with a way to make some truly black, black salt. So then I started thinking about charcoal and I've used those little charcoal briquettes that we use uh, to burn like resin incense on. I've ground part of one of those up to make black salt and it worked fine. There are chemicals in that and then I got to thinking, what I really need is some good, pure charcoal that I know what it's made out of. I have this fantastic son-in-law, PJ, and uh, he actually has a YouTube channel called Guy Stuff with PJ, which if you're into that kind of thing, definitely check it out. He does a lot of uh, guy stuff, um, and I love doing guy stuff myself. He knows how to start a fire with flint and an iron. And years ago, he made char cloth, which is one of the ingredients that you use to help to start a fire like that. That He was doing it at my house, and I remembered watching him do it and being fascinated by the process. So what he did was he took an Altoids tin and put little pieces of fabric inside the Altoids tin, sealed that closed, and put it in the bonfire that we were having with no oxygen getting to it. And um, when he was finished, what was inside were these little cloths that were not burned up, but had turned basically to charcoal cloths. And you use that to start a fire um, as kind of your tinder when you strike the iron against the flint and you get the little sparks to make fire. Caveman stuff. And I never forgot that. I always thought it was fascinating. So when I set about to come up with a better black salt recipe, I started thinking about charcoal that artists use. As many of you guys know, I'm also an artist. Uh, a lot of times sketches and stuff with charcoal. And one of the woods that is used a lot in artist charcoal is willow. And willow has some great magical correspondences. So then I got to thinking about PJ and his char claws. And I was like, that is how they make that artist's charcoal. And then I started thinking about all of the magical tree correspondences. And it occurred to me that we could use magical trees to make our own charcoal in the same way that he made the char cloth and use that to make our black witch's salt. So that is what I did. And it worked fantastically. Such great black salt. It was the most powerful black salt that I've ever worked with because I was involved in every step of the process and bringing that tree energy into it was fantastic. Now, as some of you guys might know, I wrote a book about the magic of trees, uh, the Celtic trees specifically, called Voice of the Trees Companion, which goes with my 
Voice of the Trees deck. I will put a link to that in the description below if that's something that you're really interested in. Some tree energies and bring that into my magical black salt making. So it's a fairly simple process. There's only two ingredients in the base recipe. If you want to add more ingredients, you certainly can. And as you know, I am a strong believer in take the recipe that you find and adjust it and mess with it. And same with spells. I, I believe that you should take it all and make it your own. So um, you're welcome to take this recipe that I'm gonna share with you and add to it whatever you want and make it your own. Uh, but really the base recipe, all it requires is some little sticks. This is some willow branches that I got out of a local park. I did not take these off of the tree. There were plenty of broken little branches on the ground around the willow trees that I didn't need to do that. I just grabbed a few off the ground. I could tell by looking at them they were willow and I just busted them up long enough to put in my pocket and brought them home. No big deal. You can use any kind of tree that you want for this. You don't have to just use willow. If there's a special tree that you like to work with, then definitely grab some of that. The only other thing that you need is sea salt or any salt that you could get your hands on. If you don't have sea salt and all you have at home is just regular salt, go ahead and use that, no big deal. I like to use sea salt and I got the coarse ground because I'm gonna put it in my mortar and pestle and it will grind it a little bit and I didn't want it to be um, ground too finely. So, but you could adjust, you know, how you make this accordingly to the ingredients that you have on hand. As far as tools go, a mortar and pestle comes in handy. If you have another way that you like to grind up your herbs, you don't have a mortar and pestle, you can definitely do that. This is a really messy project to get into. There's going to be black charcoal to a certain degree. So yeah, you wanna be mindful about where you work on this project so you don't make a mess, uh, stain your carpet or your couch or your clothes or whatever. Now you can store it any way you want, I got these cool little jars from the dollar store uh, with these little shells in them. I'm gonna pull the shells out and use them for something else. I'm not really sure what yet, but you can also store it in a little baggie or any way that you want to, as long as you mark it um, easy peasy. The only other thing that you're gonna need to do this as far as tools are concerned is some kind of a tin. Now you can use, if you have an empty mint tin of any kind that you want to use, that is great. Make sure it has a nice lid that stays on. Uh, sometimes they sell gum in little tins with lids that are kind of shaped a little differently. It doesn't really matter what shape the tin is as long as it has a lid that seals because the idea is that you want whatever you put into the fire to be sealed and not get any oxygen. Um, I've used this little tin to make mine. As you can see, it's a nightmare. Um, but these little tins, and here's what the inside of it ends up look, looking like. So don't use a tin that you want to stay nice. This is what it's gonna look like after it comes out of the fire. I might just go ahead and use this Altoids tin. I wanna break up all of my branches up small enough so that they'll fit in the tin. I'm gonna do quite a bit. And this is enough, this is enough willow to make a ton of black salt. I am actually going to have enough uh, to make a batch for me to use and I'm also thinking I might offer some in my Etsy store uh, for people who just don't want to deal with making it um, at some point. I don't really have enough jars to do that right now but watch for it in the future. I probably will put it in my Etsy store. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to just charge these little willow branches and kind of wake up the energy of these. I want this salt to be something that can be used for multiple purposes. Um, and luckily willow has a lot of really great properties. Willow is associated with both the Morrigan and Hecate. Uh, dark goddesses, basically most dark goddesses uh, are associated with the willow tree for boosting your magical power, add energy to your spells, love, healing, 
protection, bringing deep peace into your life, and awakening your intuition. So this is going to be good for all of those purposes. Willow also deals with emotion. So if you're trying to work on setting emotional boundaries in your life, uh, things like that, any kind of protection magic, any kind of bringing healing to yourself, boosting your magic, all of those things, um, this black salt is going to be great for any of that. So what I'm going to do right now is I am just going to simply awaken the energy in this. So you're basically just telling that what you want it to do. And I just usually do that in my mind. I think to myself, I offer gratitude and thanks to the willow tree for gifting me with these twigs. And I send Reiki, because I do Reiki, into these to awaken their power, their energy. I want to awaken the power for whoever uses this black salt that I will make with these willow branches to help boost their magical power, bring love, healing, protection, boost boundaries in their life. All of the power of the willow tree I awaken in these branches and ask them to be a tool for magic for the greater good of whoever uses it so i awaken the power in these willow branches and i can feel them drawing the power so i know that it's working okay so now I am going to pop them in my little tin. There they are. Now we are going to pop outside and I will show you how we're going to turn these little willow branches into willow charcoal. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm also going to share with you ways to use your new witch's black salt. All right, let's go outside. Come on. Okay, so we're outside at my grill. Just remove the grate and uh, build a fire like you normally would uh, for your charcoal. I'm just pouring some out, basically enough to cover the Altoid tin top and bottom. Uh, make a nice pile and then you're going to douse it with your starter fluid unless you use the kind of charcoal that you don't need that for, then of course you can skip that step. Uh, always use safety precautions when dealing with fire. So you're gonna let your coals get good and hot. And once they're hot, and you can see that they're all, they've got that white forming on them. Grab your Altoids tin with your uh, wood inside, the wood of your choice and you're gonna put that in the grill. Uh, now the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna make a bed of hot charcoal for the tin to sit on because I want it surrounded by charcoal. What we're gonna be doing here is the wood is gonna be heated to a really high temperature by surrounding it with this hot charcoal. Um, now, heating wood to a high temperature normally causes it to burst into flames. We are depriving the wood of oxygen by putting it in the Altoids tin. What that's going to do is it's going to push all the gases and any water remaining in the wood will be pushed out of the wood and it will leave only the carbonized wood behind. That is how charcoal is made. Now this is going to sit for a really long time. I'm basically going to leave this here until that charcoal burns completely out and the tin is cool. You don't want to try to open this tin up while it's hot because it can cause the charcoal inside to burst into flames and we don't want that. What we want is to let it cool completely. I came back in the morning and uh, pulled the tin out. So it was completely cool, easy to touch. You didn't have to worry about burning yourself. And as you can see inside, we now have charcoal, which you can use to do sketches, but you can also use it to make black 
salt. So here we are in the witch's kitchen. I'm gonna grab my mortar and pestle. I use this brass one because it's easy to clean and this is messy. Uh, sea salt or any salt of your choice. And there is a little bit of the uh, charcoal that we made earlier, as you can see. I'm gonna put some of that charcoal in the uh, mortar and pestle. And uh, we're gonna grind that up. You can kind of see how much I started with. And you really wanna get it going. You know, just grind it up to a fine powder the best that you can with your mortar and pestle. And there you can see, we've got a nice powder. So the next step is to grab your salt and pour some salt in. And you can put as much or as little as you want. You're basically just gonna go by, by look. I actually made a bigger batch than I usually do. I added a lot here. And then just start grinding again with your uh, mortar and pestle. As you can see, it's already starting to blend. You're basically just gonna use your mortar and pestle to blend the salt with your charcoal until you have a nice black salt. It wasn't quite as dark as I wanted, so I actually added a little bit more of my charcoal and blended it some more. Of course, as you do this, you wanna do it with intention thinking about your purpose as you go. And as you can see, what we've produced is a really nice, very black witch's salt. I'm really pleased with how this comes out. Now I'm going to put it in a bottle. This is my little bottle. I've added a label to it. And I've just rolled up a piece of paper in order to make a funnel so that I can pour it in without making too much of a mess. Dealing with this salt can be fairly messy, so anything that you can do to prevent, you know, getting it everywhere is, is a good thing. And now I'm just gonna put my little cork on top, and my black salt is ready to go. I can place it on my altar or put it in my apothecary and use it for all of my magical purposes. Anybody can do this, whether you have a barbecue grill, a little hibachi that you're doing on the deck of your apartment. If you're having a big bonfire for, say, uh, one of the Sabbaths or Esbats, you can definitely um, do it then to bring in the energy of that festival. As promised, I want to share some of the ways that you can use black salt in your magic. And this is just a jumping off place. You can come up with a lot of your own after you get some of these ideas. I'm sure it's going to spark your imagination in that creative witchy mind of yours. And you'll come up with some other great ideas. Okay, so here are some of the uses. You can add a little pinch of black salt to any protection amulet bag that you make. You do a little mojo bag, put a little sprinkle of black salt in that, and that will boost the protection energy of that charm bag. You can use it to put your candle in when you're doing protection or banishing work, and it surrounds your candle in that way. You can charge the candle to suck all of the negativity that you're dealing with in your life into that candle, and it will pull down and as the candle burns out, it will meet that black salt and that will vanquish the whole mess. Witch's protection jar. Uh, you can add some black salt to your witch's protection jar as well, along with all of the other protection elements that you wanna add. You can sprinkle a pinch of it across your threshold to help keep out negative energy from people. And if someone comes into your house that you don't want there or that you're just not into, when they leave, take a little pinch of black salt and toss it in their footsteps after they've gone and this will prevent them from coming back. Now this is something you can do with regular salt as well, but black salt just gives it that extra pow. You can use it in a little dish in the workplace if you work in an office to help absorb negative vibrations in the workplace to halt office gossip and absorb drama. 
You can put it in a tiny jar or bottle to carry with you to repel negativity, curses, hexes, general bad vibes uh, as a way to repel those things or to absorb those things into the salt instead of absorbing them into yourself. It's just in how you program that. Um, you can use it for any of your shadow work. You can just keep it as a, di in a dish on your altar when you're doing your meditations for your shadow work to dress your candle with if you're working on setting emotional boundaries because black salt is great for setting boundaries. It's a great tool for self-development in that way. You can use it in a dish on your altar if you're working with dark goddesses or any dark moon magic or just to add energy to your working. If you're doing any kind of magic for success, um, bringing money into your life, things like that, and you know, you're doing like, like maybe a charm bag or a candle work or anything like that, and you're worried about other people's jealousy interfering with your spell work, use a little bit of black salt in that working, and that will prevent their jealousy from coming into your situation and messing you up. You can also sprinkle it on protection candles. So you can sprinkle a little bit of black salt around the perimeter of your property to help protect your boundaries and keep you safe from negative vibrations. It's an extra level of warding that you can do. Um, you can use it in every room in your house in the same way that you would use white salt uh, if you want to add extra oomph to your um, to your wards. And I've got some more ideas about how to make magical wards. You can include black salt in any of these. Here's a link for that video up here. Lots of ideas for magical warding and protecting. So those are just a few ideas of things that you can do with your new black salt. If there are any methods for using black salt that you like that I didn't mention, make sure you drop it in the comments because there's always a great conversation down there. And I would love to know your ideas and I'm sure that the rest of the viewers would too. Hope that you guys give this a try because it is really, really a fun way to make your black salt. It looks amazing. You're gonna get really black, 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 black salt. Be careful where you use it. I've seen places online where they tell you, you can use it to cast your circle in your home home. I kind of don't recommend this personally. If this is a practice that you do, by all means, go for it. I'm not going to recommend people do this for a couple of reasons. If you use it inside, it's going to leave a mess, a mess. Um, you're going to get that black sooty stuff everywhere. So I don't recommend that you do that. Um, if you do use it around a candle, be careful that you don't get it on your white silk altar cloth or something. Make sure it's contained on a dish or a plate or something where you can easily sweep it away and not make a big mess and ruin your stuff. And if you're casting a circle with it outside, if you just want to sprinkle a little bit, it's probably going to be okay. But again, too much salt cast in your yard. You want to just use it sparingly in this way because it can kill your grass and stuff. So just be careful about how you use it. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do. I love sharing these ideas with you guys. Feel free to share this video with some of your friends too, because these are tips that every witch can use. Your witchy friends will thank you for it. Here's a couple more videos that I think you guys will enjoy. I will see you next time. Until then, stay safe, healthy, and happy. And as always, remember to be your magic. Bye, guys.